We have already resolved the pole barn paradox qualitatively. So now let's try using space-time diagrams. We will begin by looking at the lab frame. So, here is our picture of the barn. A is the front of the barn, B is the back of the barn, Q is the front of the pole, and P is the back of the pole. At rest, the barn's length is 10 meters. At rest, the pole's length is 20 meters. But because, in this instance, we are in the lab frame, and the pole is moving close to light speed, at gamma equals 2, the pole appears to us as 10 meters long. Furthermore, we will define Q and A to meet at 0, 0, meaning space coordinate 0 and time coordinate 0. Okay, now we are ready to draw the space-time diagram in the lab frame. So in the lab frame, points A and B do not move. They are stationary because the barn is stationary. This means that the world lines for A and B will be as shown in red. A is always at the 0 meter mark in terms of x and progresses forward in time, and B is always at the 10 meter mark and progresses forward in time. Now let's consider Q. Q is at the front of the pole, and at time 0 it is at A, which means that it is at 0 meters in terms of its x-coordinate. However, some time later, Q will hit B. And because the pole is going at a constant velocity, on our space-time diagram, it will be a straight line with constant slope. So therefore, Q will intersect B at some time later. And we know exactly when Q and B hit, because we know that gamma equals 2 in solving for the velocity, and therefore the time, we get that the time is 11.55 meters. So let's also look at P at time 0. P is at negative 10 meters because the pole is 10 meters long. And it is moving at the same speed as Q because both P and Q are on the pole. So its world line should be parallel to Q's world line. And um, P should hit 0 meters at 11.55 meters in time. So therefore, in the lab frame, P and A coincide at the same time that B and Q coincide. So the farmer believes that the pole fits inside the barn. Now let's switch to the pole frame. So we have a new drawing because in the pole frame um, the pole is not length contracted. It is exactly 20 meters because the pole thinks it is coming, it is staying at rest and it thinks that the barn is speeding uh, straight into it. So the barn instead is contracted because gamma equals 2 to a length of 5 meters. In terms of the diagram, this time Q will not be moving. Uh, it will be staying at position 0 meters and moving forward in time. And P will be staying at position negative 20 meters and moving forward in time. A is the next point to consider. So in the pole frame, A starts at Q at time 0 at uh, space coordinate 0, and races towards the other end of the pole, which is P. So it'll hit P at some time. Now, because we know that gamma equals 2, and we've calculated our velocity to be about 0.87, uh, the time comes out to be 23.10 meters. Note that um, you won't get 23.10 if you use 0.87, um, because I did not round on my calculator. Finally, we have point B. So B starts at positive 5 meters in the x direction, and in the pole frame it comes racing towards Q. Um, and if you use the calculations that we have been doing, you will find that the time is 5.77 meters until B and Q coincide. So what does this diagram tell us? Well, if we start at t equals 0, which is basically x axis, and we move upwards, we can see the order of events. So the first event that happens is that Q and B hit, which makes sense because when we discuss this paradox qualitatively, um, Q and B hit first and the doors closed and opened before A and P met and the doors closed and opened. So this diagram uh, affirms what we uh, said earlier. 
You may be wondering where the invariant hyperbola comes in. Well, to see, we'll have to overlay the two space-time diagrams in the lab and in the pole frames. So here you see the lab frame. Here is the pole frame overlaid on top of the lab frame. As you can see, I denoted all the pole frame word lines with a prime. So A prime, B prime, P prime, and Q prime. Now let's look at the events. So what is very interesting is that, that we have two sets of events in two different frames. Circled in green are the event where B intersects Q, as well as where B prime intersects Q prime. So they are the same event in two different reference frames. But note that they fall on one invariant hyperbola. I've done the same for where A and P and A prime and P prime intersect in purple. And note they too fall in the same invariant hyperbola. So what the invariant hyperbola really tells us, it is how we translate between different reference frames. For the same event, it will be on the same invariant hyperbola across reference frames.